3 for Army Recognition Editorial Team at AUSA 2017, the Association of United States Army Exhibition and Conferences. This is a yearly event and an opportunity for all defense companies from the United States to showcase latest innovation and technology for United States Army programs. Hey, my name is uh, Jim Miller. I'm the Business Development Director for Combat Vehicles portion of BAE Systems. And the uh, AMPV is the Armored Multipurpose Vehicle for the Army. And the program is designed to replace the M113 series of vehicles that's currently fielded in the Army. It's been fielded for a, a long time in the Army and it's, it's time to replace it. The AMPV will replace all those 113s eventually uh, over the length of this contract. This is the first time we've shown a production version of the vehicle in uh, public. This is the 13th vehicle we've built in our production line. We're in the engineering manufacturing development phase. Still really a prototype, but it's the first production vehicle that, that's been out to see in the public. We're pretty excited about it. So the 113 was, is a very smaller, a much smaller baseline vehicle. It has problems with survivability in today's environment, and particularly uh, uh, the environment where there's roadside blasts and things like that. So the AMPV was designed to improve the survivability and the mobility of the of the personnel carrier vehicle that was uh, filled by 113 with that role and uh, in a way that uh, gets the same mobility and the same protection as the M1 tank and the Bradley fighting vehicle. So there are five variants of, of the vehicle currently. There is a, uh, this one is called the general purpose vehicle. There's a mortar carrier that carries a 120 millimeter mortar. There is a medical evacuation vehicle, an ambulance type vehicle with room for uh, medics and patients in the back, both on litter, litters, so laying down, but also in seats if that's needed. There's a medical treatment variant which allows, which allows a doctor forward to do emergency surgery to stabilize a patient before he could be evacuated. And then uh, there is a mission command vehicle, and that's the vehicle that has they would use in command posts. It has radios and computers and places for the commander and his staff to work in the field. Uh, general purpose vehicle, let me just describe this vehicle. Uh, it's uh, the general purpose vehicle, some people call it the first sergeant's vehicle. It is the workhorse of the uh, Armored Brigade combat team. So these vehicles uh, are used generally by the unit first sergeant in many cases to move people, food, ammunition, occasionally a casualty on the battlefield. And so it's a kind of a baseline vehicle. It's got a crew of two and there's room for four people to sit in the back. There's room for a litter if you need to move a patient or evacuate a casualty. And there's also plenty of room for storage of ammunition, food, those kind of things so that uh, we can deliver those things into the environment where the uh, Bradleys and uh, M1 tanks would be fighting. So this uh, this also the first time we've shown the vehicle with its armor protection suite installed. And uh, so uh, we have uh, just the most obvious thing is this bar armor in the front, which is designed to defeat uh, rocket propel grenades, those kind of things, to, to protect some of the areas of the vehicle that need that protection. The, the boxes that say inert behind me are the examples of the uh, reactive armor that goes on the vehicle and it gives it the protection the vehicle's going to need to get up front in the area where the Bradleys the M1s are fighting and still survive on the battlefield. So we've got that protection on all sides now of the vehicle. The underbody has been vastly improved over 113. It makes this one of the most survivable vehicles in the Armored Brigade combat team now. And that's, that's important. We want our soldiers to survive on the battlefield. And that's one of the key drivers really for this whole program. So, Right now it's designed for a 50 caliber machine gun as you see up here. Uh, you can use different size machine guns. 50 is the largest that's been mounted on the vehicle. Um, in most cases it will be a 50 caliber. Uh, the Army has not looked at anything about, above that yet. There is, there is potential that may happen one day, but that's not in the current set of requirements or currently what we're building to. Uh, speed, range, maneuverability, all vastly improved over M113. Uh, again, to be able to move at the speed of an M1 tank and a Bradley fighting vehicle is pretty important. And, and then to be able to do the cross-country, cross-mobility kind of don't get stuck when you're mo most needed 
is critical on the battlefield where this thing is going to be. Uh, places like uh, uh, some of the worst swampy places you can think of, winter conditions, this vehicle is going to be able to maintain the speed and the mobility of the brigade. Uh, we're currently in that engineering, manufacturing, development phase, EMD phase. In this phase, we have to deliver 29 vehicles. We have to, they're going to be delivered by the end of this year, in the winter, uh, this winter. Uh, those 29 vehicles, 17 are already been delivered. This is number 13. Uh, it was delivered already, uh, went to Aberdeen to be tested. The Army sent it back for the show. So it had a chance to get a little bit dirty before it came back. Uh, but uh, six of those vehicles are down at Aberdeen. Six are over at the Yuma test. Uh, the other ones are in logistics development. So the program's moving right along, uh, on schedule, on cost, on time, all those things. And after EMD's done, the Army will make a decision to start the next phase of production. Uh, there's uh, low rate production. There's some work we may do uh, to speed up that acceleration or accelerate that program uh, according to the Army. So we're waiting to hear the details of that. But it's a pretty exciting future. Uh, there's a lot of 113s out there to be replaced by the Army. And so it's a pretty promising program. Well, I think that number is yet to be determined. And, uh, but we're, we're under contract for 29 right now. And then it looks like uh, in, uh, if, if we go to low rate on schedule, and I think we will, we're going to be building about the equivalent of brigade size set of these a year for several years. So that's, that's pretty exciting. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Deepak Bazaz. I'm the VP of Programs for Combat Vehicles. Uh, what we've got behind me is the Bradley M. Shore Ad. So short range air defense is definitely a capability that the Army Chief of Staff has expressed as a gap to what the Army needs. Uh, there's different capabilities that we've seen. Uh, there's, there's mobile shore ad and then there's static shore ad. Uh, we want something that's going to move with the maneuver force, specifically with the ABCT, which is the Armored Brigade Combat Team. So what we did was took a Bradley platform, a standard A3 platform, uh, which is what's in the fleet today, and we adapted it, really added additional um, components to it, high technology components, to provide that short range uh, air defense capability. Especially on the turret, because basically everything on the chassis and below hasn't changed significantly. So what we've got as the integrator, everything we brought in is TRL 7 through 9, so high maturity. What, what starting off with is you want to detect what's out there. So those PMRs, those are radars that can detect at long distances what, what's out there. And as soon as you pick it up, now you can start to engage it. The, up at the very top, you see another optic system that once you know that something's out there, it will try to identify what is it. Is it a quadcopter? Is it a helicopter? Is it this? Is it that? So that detects. Now it identifies what it is. Now you can go, you have a series of effectors you can start engaging with. I always start with the cheapest and go to the most expensive. So the cheapest is if it's a UAV, you've got RF emitters up there that can basically confuse it, cause it to ground or whatever, so you engage it using disruptors that way. Um, you go to the next level of effect, which is we've got the Apache gun, the XM914, which has got a prox fuse so it can get near the threat, explode and take it out. So that's the next level and, and that's relatively cheap uh, engagement. Then you finally, if, if the threat requires it and it's of the, the, the appropriate size, then we can introduce in the missile systems. So it's a layered defense of, of the formation that you can start engaging. And, and the missile defense system is essentially tailorable to whichever configuration you're looking for, whatever the threat environment is. So it's a multi-missile mission um, interface that we've developed here. Everything runs off the Bradley fire control system, so you're not introducing in a new fire control system. So that's a quick walk around of the of the of what we've got on here. You can use a stinger, you can use an aim. There's, it's really, really up to the user. And part of why we're at the show is to have the conversation with senior leaders to see what kind of missiles do they see as appropriate for the ABCT mission and we've gotten some feedback. 
will tweak our concept and be able to, you know, continue moving on with its development. Yeah, this, so this takes out the 25 millimeter, which is currently what's on the Bradley, and puts in the the 914, which has got that um, that prox fuse capability. First of all, my name is Iftach Kleinman. I'm responsible for the marketing activities of uh, the Trophy family and other uh, armor protection related uh, subjects. Uh, we have uh, decided to expose uh, what we call Trophy LV, which is a derivative of the well-known combat-proven combat Trophy HV variant for tanks and under infantry fighting vehicles. Uh, this is a lighter version of the current trophy that provides protection against anti-tank uh, rockets, uh, tandem and unitary uh, rockets uh, for platforms like the JLTV. Uh, we are very happy that uh, Oshkosh have decided to work with us to integrate uh, Trophy uh, LV on their vehicle, increasing and bringing the level of protection of this vehicle to relevancy. Why do I mean relevancy? Because if you check what is happening out there with uh, RPGs, mainly tandem war uh, warhead RPGs, you'll find out that such vehicles uh, have to have this kind of protection. Absolutely. I think that uh, with introducing uh, Trophy LV, we are covering the entire scope of a combat uh, fleet. Uh, trophy uh, HV will cover uh, the tanks and infantry fighting vehicles and now with this uh, low uh, weight uh, system will cover both uh, light tactical vehicles, uh, utility trucks and potentially uh, infantry vehicles, uh, 8x8 vehicles, uh, etc. So uh, we don't like to talk uh, technology too much uh, around here. But what I could uh, say that we have uh, used our 25 years of experience in developing active protection systems to provide this uh, lightweight uh, system. The system will deal with uh, the unitary and tandem warhead uh, RPGs. There are no moving parts uh, in this uh, technology, so that's what allows it to be uh, effective though uh, low cost and low weight. So we are talking about a very light system, about uh, 350 kilograms overall for such a vehicle. Uh, it does not affect the vehicle from the weight perspective nor from the center of gravity perspective. Well, in order to provide protection uh, for such a vehicle with no moving uh, parts, uh, this is the uh, optimized uh, setup. We are using, of course, a sensor suite based on a radar and electro-optic uh, sensors uh, made by uh, Raphael and uh, use our experience with developing um, warheads uh, and countermeasures to build this very uh, sophisticated, unique uh, countermeasure. Unlike uh, Trophy HV, which launches uh, a countermeasure that engages the threats away from the vehicle. Uh, here we have to use what we call a uh, wall mount system, which engages uh, the threats in the very close pro proximity, around one meter from the vehicle. This uh, forces us to gain 100% success rate. Otherwise, if something blows up in such pro uh, pro proximity from the vehicle, the vehicle is in a big, big problem. So there is no room for error here. Um, and one of the advantages of such a system is the ability to deal with tandem warheads. Uh, since the world has moved from unitary RPGs uh, to tandem warheads, you have to find a solution to deal with the sophisticated warheads. Uh, bar armor, slot armor, RPG nets, which are the current, I would say, popular solution 
are not relevant anymore because the enemy uses either improvised RPGs or tandem warhead RPGs um, and this type of solution cannot deal with these advanced threats. The system, I would say, makes this type of vehicle, vehicles relevant. Uh, the current, the basic armor will, will provide protection against, let's say, the bullets or the fragments from artillery, etc. But this current uh, armor cannot provide protection against the RPGs. So it's, a, I would say, a, a kit that provides relevant protection to this type of vehicles. I must say that in today's uh, peacekeeping missions, you see more and more vehicles like this. They carry, carry out most of the, vision, the, miss, the missions. And uh, the problem is that the enemy uses these advanced threats. So it becomes a matter of time until these kind, these kind of vehicles will be, uh, I would say, uh, hit, and not to mention the casualties that are involved in such attacks. Well, I think that uh, the world is moving more and more to more lethal capabilities. Uh, I think that uh, the 30 millimeter uh, ammunition is, is becoming more and more uh, popular. What we are presenting uh, here is uh, uh, the actually it's the Apache uh, helicopter gun, a short 30 millimeter uh, gun. We have incorporated to a remote weapon station including a 7.62 a coaxial machine gun to provide protection, uh, to provide, excuse me, lethality to a shorter uh, ranges. And this combination of uh, high lethality of the 30 millimeter gun incorporated with 7.62 for the short ranges provide, turns this vehicle to a very uh, lethal uh, vehicle. Uh, reconnaissance, uh, light reconnaissance, uh, rapid assault, etc. By the way, which makes uh, this vehicle to a hot target to those insurgents, which um, then forces you to provide higher level of protection. Thank you very much. Thank you.